This is the Minis Forum MS-01, and it's the most hyped mini PC online. People call it the ultimate NAS. Meet the Minis Forum MS-01 mini PC. We'll be making basically no compromises to performance. The ultimate router, the ultimate Proxmox box. Well, I've spent some real time with it, and I'm here to tell you that most of that is just wrong. This thing is brilliant at one specific role, and honestly, it's pretty mediocre at most others. Let's break it down. Sheridan Computers. IT. Communications. Support. Before we go any further, let me start with the BIOS, because honestly, I don't like it. The BIOS is designed like a laptop BIOS pretending to be a server BIOS. It wants you to use a mouse. The menus are slow, it's awkward to navigate, and everything is hidden behind click-heavy interfaces. If you're setting up Proxmox or doing home lab work, you want a clean, keyboard-friendly BIOS. This is not that. It works, but it kind of feels like style over usability. Next up, RAM and storage installation. RAM is straightforward, but remember it uses DDR5 SO DIM, which is expensive at the moment. With two slots, nothing weird there. If you're based in the UK and looking for a great place to buy computer hardware and components, I'll give a quick non-sponsored shout out to scan.co.uk. I worked there over 25 years ago as a tech lead before I started Sheridan Computers, and we still buy hardware from them today. So that should say a lot. That kind of long-term trust doesn't happen by accident. The NVMe situation though, that's where things get interesting. You get three M2 slots. Sounds great, right? Except all three slots are completely different. Slot one is a PCI Express 4x4, full speed. Slot two is a PCI Express 3x4, a bit slower. And slot three is a PCI Express 3x2, which is much slower. So this means if you try to build a RAID or ZFS pool, then the whole thing is going to run at the speed of the slowest drive. So that'd be great for YouTube thumbnails. It's pretty terrible for NAS performance though. And then there's another issue, cooling. Only slot one has proper space for a heatsink. The other slots are crammed under the fan shroud. If you try to use a large heatsink, it won't fit. So you end up with one well-cooled drive and two that get whatever airflow they can find. For a NAS or heavy storage box, this is kind of a deal breaker. Now let's look at that PCI Express slot and why it sucks. So yes, we have the PCI Express slot. Yes, it exists, but it's basically useless unless your card is slim as hell. Most GPUs, no. Most HBAs, no. Most NICs, also no. It's a great idea on paper, but in reality, it's extremely restrictive and impractical. So let's take a look at what it's not good for. Not a NAS, unequal NVMe lanes, poor cooling, no ECC, and bad endurance for 24 7 writes. It's not that practical as a router. The CPU is hilariously overpowered for routing, it wastes energy, and a cheaper M100 does the same job if you don't need 10 gig. I wouldn't suggest it for a desktop replacement either. Integrated GPU limits, laptop CPU limits, sustained loads, DDR5 SO DIM costs, and no real upgrade path either. So this thing is not an all-in-one wonder box. So if it's not a NAS, it's not a router, and it's not a desktop, what is the MS-01 actually good for? It's actually ideally suited for a compact Proxmox or XCPNG virtualization host with external storage. And in that specific case, it absolutely shines. And the two 10 gig SFP plus ports just give you that connectivity to proper storage such as TrueNAS. So let's take a look at why it is great for Proxmox or an XCPNG virtualization host. You get fast NVMe for VMs and caching, 10 gigabit network connectivity for connecting to a proper storage device such as TrueNAS, Enough CPU power for multiple VMs and containers, low noise, small size, and the PCI Express slot for a slim network interface card or GPU. 
And this thing's got tons of networking for VLAN labs, PFSense VMs, test environments. This is perfect for a home lab node. Not a server, not a workstation, a node. A compact hypervisor that lives next to your real storage. We have this M2 to U2 SSD adapter. And some hard drive screws. And then we have this M2 heatsink. So we've got the heatsink. And this looks like it just holds in place with these rubber bands. I'm guessing that's for space saving. We've also got the power lead and the adapter. So this is a heavy, decent feeling power supply. Uh, 19 volt, 9.47 amp, 179 watt. On the back, there's a release latch, which you can push and then pull the case out. See, I've already got this one open because no matter how many times I try it, it's not as simple as it seems. So we have the PCI Express slot here, and it looks like the memory goes under the fan that's attached next to the CPU. And assuming we take these three screws out across the top. So that's these screws here. We, the fan needs to come out in order to get at the memory slots. Assuming it's just those three. Yeah. Oh, now we can see the memory slots exposed. I'll just fit this RAM. So if you can see that there, we can see that they are labelled. This is A1 and this is B1. And here we're using Corsair Vengeance 32 gig Sodim DDR5. Let's go ahead. And pop that in. We need to put the CPU back in place. CPU fan, sorry. Let's flip this upside down. So we can see the Wi Fi chip here, and then we've got the NVMe slots. So we're going to have to remove this fan in order to get at that. Okay, so. If we remove this, so where we've got the three NVMe slots, you'll notice there's a switch here, and this is U2 M2 power. So if you're fitting U2 drive, you need to flick this because the voltages are different. And then this would fit in. As such, per se, you need to, and then you can mount the two and a half inch drive on top, but you're going to need to make sure the voltages are correct. We're not going to need this. So we're going to need to mount our NVMe. And you can see this heat sink has a hole in the back. and that's So when we mount it, it goes that way. And that's obviously so you can screw through and get the screw in. So, so we just put the rubber bands over the top, if you can see that. And just stick this back together. So we'll put the lid on and see if we can uh, get it to power up. So the lid just slides in like so. Let's see if it powers up. We've got a display, so that's good. Um, okay, not sure. Uh, yeah, wants to use a mouse for BIOS, I prefers to. Um, okay, 
So you can see the BIOS version, system build time, manufacturer, got the product name, Venus series, we've got the serial number, access level, processor type, 13th gen Intel Core i9-13900H, processor speed, memory, so 32 gig detected, so that's good. It looks under advanced, interested computing. Well, this mouse is a bit, maybe it's because I'm on a capture card. Uh, so it's got T TPM 2.0. CPU configuration. So we've got VTD, we can enable Intel VMX. Hyper threading. Boot performance, Intel speed step. C states. Active performance cores. Power settings. Coming back. I'm not keen on this BIOS. Onboard device settings. So we've got primary display, Intel graphics, aperture size, HD audio, port configurations, SRIOV support, DMA control. Now, one thing I can't seem to see Oh, network stack configuration Does it support booting from network? Yes, it does Change that to enabled And I want IPv4 Obviously you won't need to change these unless you're planning on doing this so let's save and exit. Save changes and reset. Yep. Really not a fan of this mouse thing. Uh, okay. See if we can do a network boot. Okay, it looks like we're uh, checking for a network boot. There we go. So go ahead and get Windows installed on this thing. So, new operating system deployment. Okay, we're gonna to have to boot off the normal USB to do this. Hopefully it will at least recognize the hard drive. Okay, so I don't have internet, continue with limited setup. Okay, let's have a look what it has detected. Nothing, so we've got no network adapters, Bluetooth not detected. So out of the box, Windows is not going to detect your network controllers. Awesome. I'm going to have to head across and download the drivers manually. I feel like a caveman. So now we're good. We've got no exclamation marks, which is exactly what we wanted. So it's not really an issue to get it working. Might as well install the uh, graphics card driver applications while we're here.
I do actually like this device, obviously depending on what you're using it for. Memory goes under this fan next to the CPU. So you've got two DDR5 soldering ports. Um, we've got three M.2 ports. This first one can be used with an adapter to fit a full 2.5 inch drive here. Uh, the first one is a PCI 4x4. The second one is a PCI 3x4. And then the last one is a PCI 3x2. And just of note, you can see where I've fitted an M2 drive to this. And that heatsink is very close. So if you fit in the other two M.2s, the heatsink can be problematic to say the least because the fan gets in the way. But overall, depending on what you want this device for, it is a great little device. So it's quiet, it's not silent. I wouldn't like it at the side of my bed because it does have fans inside. We've got the Minis Forum logo on the side. The Minis Forum MS-01 is one of the most overrated mini PCs if you're buying it for a NAS, a router, or a desktop. It's certainly not the ultimate mini PC that everybody claims, but as a small virtualization node for Proxmox or XCPNG, it's honestly brilliant. If you'd like to buy the MS-01, check first to see if the bundle is available. As you can see here, it's sold out, but they did have the bundle for $799. The bare bone you can still get. I'm not surprised the bundle sold out with the way RAM prices are going. That's why I link you to scan.co.uk. That's where I purchased this RAM and the one terabyte SSD from. If you made it this far, thank you very much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notifications icon. If you'd like to hire us for any IT consulting, head across to SheridanComputers.com, and I'll see you in the next video.